Good day ladies and gents and welcome to the next part of our structural fire engineering course here at Stellenbosch University. We're now we're going to be looking at concrete structures in fire and historically concrete has quite a good name when it comes to fire. In real buildings where fires have broken out, concrete tends to perform quite well. You've got a very heavy or you've got very heavy sections, you've got concrete cover and concrete is a good insulator. So most of the time it it's fairly robust, fairly resilient material to design for. So for in that reason that you often see high-rise buildings in South Africa designed with concrete rather than other materials. However, it is most certainly, to certainly possible to design those other materials well and to have fire safe structures with them. But now let's start thinking about some of the aspects to look at when it comes to concrete design. And I've got a sort of scaled version of a rebar cage here. And a few things we need to think about when it comes to designing concrete materials. Firstly, the steel is often what we need to protect. Steel heats up quickly and it gets weak at high temperatures. So we want to make sure we've got sufficient cover on the outside of our column or our beam or whatever it is. And this is where you also must be careful when talking to people, that you're talking the same language. For a structural engineer, for me it's normally important, what is the distance between the outermost bar and the edge of the, co um, the, edge of the concrete? That's my cover. So that might be 25 or 30 millimeters. But for structural fire design, we want to know what is the temperature of our load bearing bar. So there we're looking for the distance normally from the edge of the concrete to the middle of the bar. So just be careful when it comes to talking about cover. Cover is normally from the outer bar to the edge of the concrete where we often are talking about an axis distance when it is in structural fire design. And then when looking at the section further, that cover around the edge of our section, because this would be cast in our column or our beam, that protects our rebar and depending on how deep it is, we can do heat transfer calculations to work out what is our steel. It could be at 300, 500, 800 degrees Celsius. Once we know how hot it is, we know what capacity it takes. And we also can work out how much heat and how deep do our isotherms, these sort of temperature lines of 200, 500, 800 degrees Celsius go. And from that we can work out a reduced cross section because in, let's say, my column, I might lose a section of the column on the outside. So instead of having a 500 millimeter wide column, I now only have a 400 millimeter column because I've lost 50 millimeters all around. So those are some of the things I may need to look at as part of my calculations. But furthermore, there are certain things we need to think about in, in concrete where as much as I said it is generally safe, with new construction we do have to be a bit careful because one of the dangers of concrete is spalling where basically what happens is when you cast concrete and it cures there's still moisture locked in that matrix and when that heats up steam is a lot larger or has a much 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 higher volume than water so it creates high pressure and it actually can cause explosive spalling of our concrete and pop off this protective cover layer around our section and then leaving the steel exposed and then it can rapidly weaken. So spalling is a major issue and that's especially uh, important with high strength concretes. 25, 30 MPA, you're probably okay, but as it gets higher and higher strength, especially the 50, 100 MPA concretes that are starting to be produced, they become a major problem because they're very dense, so the moisture cannot escape. There are ways and means of designing for that. You can either protect the concrete itself, I mean, that's starting to occur in tunnels where you want to make sure that your tunnel, in the case of a tanker fire or whatever, is, is safe. And then, or what you can do is, for instance, put in polypropylene fibers, and then the, these little plastic fibers melt, allowing the steam out. So there are always ways and means of, of designing our concrete structure for the fire severity it's exposed to. And then, last couple of things we need to think about is just how is it connected together in a general sort of conventionally cast concrete structure. It's monolithic. Everything's connected together and the rebar links. So when it heats up, it'll generally hold out and hold together. So even if one part of the structure is failing, it'll pull on the uh, adjacent beam or adjacent part of the structure. But for instance, if you've got precast elements, so if this is an element on its own, and it's sitting on top of an element, we may need to be a lot more careful because if it's not linked firmly to the adjacent structure, then you could have connection failure. And that is also a bit more dangerous. So those are some of the things we would need to look at. So as I said, in the next part of the course, we're gonna be looking at first at the concrete material, 
How does it weaken as temperatures go up? How do we calculate the temperature inside our section? And then once we know what the temperature is, how do we get to the capacity of our structure elements? So let's get now into the design of concrete structures in fire.